This is Piers Morgan tonight. May I join you here? Yes, you may. Okay. You know, I'm doing this show called Celebrity Apprentice. You yeah. You heard that. Yeah. The task was to put on a show at medieval times. I won that uh, challenge. So I've got some money here for Opportunity Village. $20,000. Yeah. And this one from Medieval Times. $20,000. There you go. That's Penn Jillette in the new season of NBC Celebrity Apprentice. He's back with me now. We'll come to that a little later, because obviously I took part in it. Sure. And won it, obviously. Um, <laughs> came and took on 13 Americans and destroyed them. Um, but we'll come to that a bit later. Let's just pick up on a running theme I've had on the show for a while now. Keeping America great. Because it seems to me there's a lot of negativity in America right now, quite rightly uh, for many reasons. But... The, the better way for America to go now is to collectively put all this brain power together and think, how do we keep this country where it should be? A great country. I, I think that uh, I, I always go with uh, individualism. I always think that uh, it's, it's, it's the nuts, it's the individuals who are passionate and allowing uh, all of us to allow each of us to do as much as we can. I think that sometimes we think that the only way great things are accomplished are collectively, and I think it's really quite the opposite. I think we want individuals to be able to uh, just really kick it out. What has gone wrong with the American dream? You know, I don't know. Uh, I think it may be uh, thinking that the government can fix everything because some things the governments can't fix. I mean, there maybe should not have been bailouts. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should not have given a lot of money to bankers and people who screwed up. I mean, maybe we should have taken the fall uh, uh, for the mistakes that were made and let those people uh, fail. Um, I mean, it's a fine line, isn't it? Because a lot of people, I think, were personally irresponsible with their very, money. With their yeah, money. Yeah. Having said that, they're not as well educated about what was going on as many of the people who've got away scot-free with what was happening. Well, not only, they didn't just get away scot-free, they were also given money by the government. You know, that too big to fail thing, uh, speaking as someone who's 300 pounds and six foot seven, <laughs> I don't think you should be too big to fail. I think that we have to embrace failure of things that go wrong. We can't expect to retroactively fix stupidity. But it's, it, it's hard, this bailout thing is complicated because Very. you cannot look at the order auto industry bailout and not conclude, if you're rational, that it's been successful? Uh, you, you, certainly. Certainly. It's, uh, they certainly have, uh, have kept that company afloat, but um, at what price? I mean, at uh, what price um, uh, morally? At what price uh, philosophically? I mean, the idea that uh, we did perhaps save an industry. We don't really know what would have happened if they'd gone through bankruptcy. I don't really understand all of that and can't predict the future. But at what price do we lose the simplicity of success and failure? I mean, the idea that um, you can fail and then have deus ex machina mm -hmm. come in from the government and do all these <clears throat> Uh, machinations to fix things does hurt I think the psyche of America where uh, if you do something and it works <clears throat> excuse me you're rewarded and if you do something that doesn't work uh, you are not rewarded and I think that's a very big price to pay even for all those jobs and the thing that I always find extraordinary in America is the sheer crippling amount of bureaucracy yeah you know if you want to buy a car 15 different documents yes have to be signed why? Why has America paralyzed itself? Well, you know, there's... With, there's with, with legal paperwork, with bureaucratic paperwork. You know, it's just becoming overwhelming. I think it's even bigger than that. I think that the problem is that citizens should feel innocent. And there is not one person in this country that can say comfortably, there is no law that I've broken. When you get all the tax laws in and everything else, mm -hmm. and when you are not... You do not feel like an innocent man. Uh, you do not have power. There's a fear in I that. I think that's such a good point. You and I should feel, you know, you haven't stolen something. You haven't, you haven't hurt somebody. You should feel 100% innocent. Mm. And nobody alive today in the U.S. can feel that. It's that horrible thing of bragging about bringing Al Capone down mm. by tax evasion. We shouldn't be able to bring someone down for what we don't want to bring them down for. We should 
punish people for their crimes and not do all this weasel stuff. And I think that nothing could terrify the government more than if the majority of citizens, who I believe are moral mm -hmm. and are innocent, actually felt to their hearts 100% innocent. Do you know, I completely agree with you. This, this interview isn't going the way I thought at all. <laughs> Sorry. Bitterly disappointing. <laughs> Let's move on to Celebrity Apprentice, because okay. <laughs> you, uh, you've emerged, you're still alive, which is one, one benefit of doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a tough show to do. It's nutty. It's just crazy. It's, you know, Annie Duke, who I believe, with yeah. all due respect to you, and so, present company excluded, perhaps, the... The best who's ever played it. Second I mean, best. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, she said it's a pretend show about pretend business where you get pretend fired. And the odd thing about it is, and, and as a winner, you can't even tell me what the rules were. Even though you won, you don't know what the rules were. No, well, my rule was quite simple. I just read all of Donald Trump's books before I did it. And I then began speaking to him in Trumpisms. Uh -huh. So if I got really stuck in the boardroom, I'd look at Donald Trump and say, you know what? My strategy was think big, kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, <laughs> as always, a great pleasure. What pleasure, pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you. Ben Gillette, when we come back from Stoner Films to White House One,